Hello and welcome to the Inspector Lestrade channel. Uh, today I'm going to be making a little video on the Tico 3D printer. Uh, now if you remember what the Tico is, great! It's been almost, uh, actually over a year now uh, that Tico has been in development. So Tico is a 3D printer started on a Kickstarter that was kind of was praised uh, for being a cheap 3D printer. It comes in at $149. Uh, now I'll have pictures up on the screen right now um, for you to see. Um, but if you want more information, go to the Kickstarter page for Tico. If you search Tico uh, 3D printer, you'll find it, but I'll also put a link down in the description. Um, but pretty much after the Kickstarter, no one has really, uh, talked about Tico, uh, at all. And I thought it would be appropriate as someone that backed Tico, uh, to kind of state how I feel about how long it's taken so far and some of the things that we've had to deal with as backers, um, between, the beginning of this investment, let's say, and now. So the latest update we got from Tico was about two days ago. And it basically says that they're still on point to ship, to start shipping on July 1st. Now, in the original Kickstarter campaign, they said that they were going to ship in November of 2015. Now, I hope most of the backers were not stupid and understood that that was pretty much impossible for this team to to deliver on. And I understood that from the very beginning. Um, it's hard to manufacture things. It's hard to get things manufactured in a time frame that they wanted to. Uh, you know, they were a little naive, a little ignorant, and they admitted that throughout the, the year that we've waited uh, that that was the case. There were things that they didn't even imagine being a trouble becoming trouble so that's fine i think i i'm glad that they have waited and it we'll see if the waiting paid off in july which is coming up soon but july 1st is when they are going to start shipping now a lot of their stuff is manufactured in china luckily they have someone that is stationed in china right now and they just stated that some people two more of their staff members are going to uh china to help the final uh, assembly and shipping of the first units, which is nice. Um, and they documented all of that in um, their updates. And that's one thing that if Tico, if the Tico team hadn't done as many updates if they, as they did once a month, official updates, but then tons and tons of updates just on the Kickstarter uh, comment section about little things that were going on. And then typically they would put those little things in the official monthly update. Uh, but it was nice to see all of this interaction. They would answer questions. They would answer, you know, all sorts of things in these updates. And they would admit that they were stupid. They, they you know, made mistakes basically because they didn't know what really went into manufacturing things. And that's the beauty of Kickstarter. Not only are you getting a product, but you are learning from the mistakes of others and they are learning along with you. Now, especially if they are a good company, they are a good Kickstarter campaign, they admit their mistakes. And Tico has definitely done that throughout the year that we have waited for this product. They have been upfront about everything and they've been straightforward about everything. Now, they've gotten a little bit of, of controversy around them for a few things. There was a Reddit AMA that didn't go very well, but I read through that and I thought it went okay. Um, a lot of people assume that this was an open source printer, and so they're kind of getting mad that Tico is holding a lot of stuff to their chest, the software, um, you know, not being able to use uh, other stuff. You have to use the, the Tico software pretty much if you don't want to void your warranty. And there was nowhere in the campaign that this was an open source printer. This wasn't, you know, MakerBot all over again. People, you know, people are fearing that this is MakerBot all over again. It's not. They were straightforward from the beginning that this is a closed source. This is a closed 3D printer. Now, you have the ability. It is open for you to hack into it. It's not hard. 
They admitted it's not hard. They don't want it to be hard, but they you they just void your warranty because they don't know what other pieces of software are going to do to the hardware. They have designed the software to be as easy and friendly as possible because this is for first time 3D printer buyers. Hence the cheap price. It's for learning how to 3D print. It's being able to just toss in a 3D print uh, that you download off the internet into the software. The software then translates it into something that Tico can use. Then Tico, the Tico software then takes care of it. I mean, it's web-based for crying out loud. But they did admit that you can use other software with it. They're just going to void your warranty. So they kind of got some controversy about that early on in the campaign. But again, they were straightforward with everything that they have come out with and that they've said we haven't seen the software we've just heard about the software we've seen some hints at the software uh they said that they didn't want to release the software before the 3d printer because then people would just you know have this software and then it doesn't do anything and then they fear that people would then uh steal the software um, which is legitimate. They already have, since they're manufacturing in China, they have already said that they are, there are clones out there, uh, trying to be made of this product. I mean, that's what happens. And people got mad at them that they patented a whole bunch of stuff in their printer. No, <laughs> it's their product. It's their invention. They have the right to patent it and safeguard it from being copied, which it already is in China. And there's nothing that they can do about it. Um, so that, that there's just some things that, that have gone on. Now, this newest update, they said, so what they did was to test uh, everything. They, they brought in um, 100 printers made of, the, made of the finalized manufacturing spec and pulled, pulled them into their offices and uh, 100 of them and put them into what they called a Tico wall. And that was their stress test basis 100 printers running all the tests and all that and throughout they have found some errors and flaws in their design and software or motor or something like that and every step of the way they have said hey this went wrong today or hey this didn't go wrong and we thought it would so we're very proud about this or hey this went wrong but we were already aware that this might happen so we've already we're kind of working on a fix for it so we have it it's ready we just have to wait for the parts to come off the line and when they get here we'll tell you how it went and every single time that they said hey this is an issue th that doesn't come around until like deep into you know multiple prints this is something that might happen. We don't want it to happen. That's silly. Uh, we're going to try and fix it. They've been straightforward with it. And their fixes have, have worked for the most part. Now, they're still having some trouble with something called a, a Bowden tube uh, popping out. And they thought that they had solved it, but they, they did, but not to the satisfaction of their standards. So they had another approach that just takes a little bit more investment. However, uh, they say the result is nearly uh, unbreakable. So they're going to find that out here uh, by next week, which will be fantastic. Um, again, I I got to give them a lot of credit. They have been straightforward with everything i mean they have even gone deep into there have been 18 updates in over the year that we've uh, been waiting for this thing and they have all had a lot of information and that's great that's what i want from a kickstarter i want information i was a kickstarter of ouya and i felt like, like all of a sudden it was at my house and there were a lot of things that I feel like if they would have been up front with the supporters of Ouya, we could have stopped that disaster way before that train left the station. And with Tico, they have been presenting us everything. They've been giving us everything that we have asked for, what we've wanted, and all of that. They've given us all their charts. They've given us videos. They've given us, you know sensitive information that they would normally not that normal companies would not even give out um they've talked about you know stuff that's gone wrong they just recently got all all of their uh government 
FCC and all that jazz figured out for all the places that they need to ship. Um, it's one of, if not the most informative groups on Kickstarter that I have seen. Uh, I haven't really backed a lot of Kickstarters because I've just been kind of weary about about it. Uh, but this one strikes me as something that, that was important. And so I was like, yeah, $149, I'll do it. I want to get in on this. I really want a 3D printer. This one looks like the one to jump in on. Um, so, yeah, I I honestly think this is, this is going to be great. I can't wait to see the software. They say it's very intuitive. It's very sleek. It's very user-friendly. Um, but can also be advanced if you want it to be. Um, so hopefully uh, by July, end of July, I get mine and I can make a video. I'll make a full video of this uh, talking, you know, showing it off, showing how it works, you know, what my first print is and all of that. Um, there is another big thing. So people have been asking, what about replacement parts? If something breaks, can I replace it myself? Do I have the ability to to fix it myself or do I have to ship it back to you? All that stuff. Um, they said that replacement parts, uh, but none of them are really 3D printable. So you can't necessarily make your own 3D printed parts. So your 3D printer can't print 3D print parts for you to use on your 3D printer because um, there's specialized materials and all of that. Um, but they're going to build up a streamlined way for getting new parts. So there's nothing uh, to sweat. I think... In a previous update, they might have said that, that you would have two options. If you think that you can fix it yourself, they'll just send you the part. If you don't think that you can fix it yourself, you send them your Tico. And I think that's fantastic. I wish more places would, more companies would do that. They would send you the part and you fix it yourself if you think that you're capable of doing that. If you mess up, they kind of just say, hey, that's your problem. You messed up. Uh, you should have sent it to us, which we offer. Um, so I think having both sides is great. Because someone like me, I work on computers. That's my job. I can fix it myself. No problem. But someone else that buys one might not be able to. So if you have both options, it works for everybody. Um, they really One thing that they really haven't talked about as well, um, which I haven't even gotten into, which I'm going to wait until I get it, is what sort of plastics um, are supported for this 3D printer. Um, they say that once it is released and they can focus on testing different uh, filaments and all of that and different plastics and all of that, um, then they'll come out with an official supported list. Uh, but right now they're just focusing on making sure the, the damn thing works perfectly, um, which is great. Um, you know, the delays, yeah, make you sad, but hopefully in the end, it is a better product. I don't want a rushed product, which is exactly what I feel like I got with Ouya. It was a rushed product and it was junk. I don't want junk from my 3D printer. I think this is fantastic. Um, so if you want to learn more about Tico and see all that stuff, there's a link in the description. Check it out. It's fantastic. Um, I'm very proud of what they have been doing. Um, I, I see great things for this company as, they, as long as they keep up uh, the stuff that they are doing. So I can't wait until I get mine. Look forward to it. And if you like this video, uh, please give it a like. Leave comments down below if you have any questions or anything or just wanted to discuss Tico in general. Um, check out my other videos. And I'll see you guys later.